got news, Corey. Who has a baby on the way with a side piece. Maybe he'll be involved in it all. Breaking news on 105.3 The Fan is presented by BetQL. Smarter bets start with BetQL. Download the BetQL app or visit BetQL.com today. Oh, my God. <laughs> do you want to do it then? That is quite the response. The commanders are, in fact, hiring Dan Quinn as their new head coach. You seem sad about Medicine this. man. We, well, not that he's not Dr. Quinn medicine man. No, that's what they hope in Washington. This is, uh, I, that's probably fair. All right. So two of your assistant, two of your former assistants now, or your former coordinators are within the division for one. Uh, the other thing too, is this is a guy that brought in a defense. And I know how plastered it got against green Bay in this game. And there were many moments when it looked inept, when you wanted it to just be up, but the, you, we haven't seen turnovers, and we haven't seen pass rush like this Agreed. since the Jimmy Johnson era. It, it has been non-existent defense a lot of times. Uh, and so the, the turnovers that we've had, are the schemes going to be built the same way for, for these players? What kind like are you keeping the similar kind of players around here? Like is, is what's now we got to go find a new guy? Is Al Harris an option? Is uh, I would think he would. Is, be. Are there there? Uh, is Joe Witt? Didn't Al Harris say he would follow Dan Quinn yes. anywhere he yes, goes? He so I'm thinking Al Harris oh, is going dear. to Washington. Yeah. To be Unless honest. you made him play caller, like that's something that, that could it is a possibility. But Joe Witt called plays uh, whenever whenever Dan Quinn was. He said, "Hey, preseason game, why don't you call plays?" And he was like, "All right, I got it." And so he went after it. So it brings up a lot of questions because now the Cowboys have to do. Now the front office has to hire or. They do like to promote from within. A lot of companies do favor that approach. Is promoting within helps keep the people inside the the, the building happy uh, because familiarity. Uh, you know how to work with that person. You bring in somebody else, whole new set of ideas, and lots going on there. So I, I'm not a huge fan of it. I know a lot of people want him out of here, but, man, he did some really good things for this team while he was here, especially building a, a, what we thought was a stout defense. I really am curious what kind of feedback is going to come in like right now and throughout the day because before, like let's say before maybe the Miami game, I feel like a lot of people would have thought, well, that sucks. So you can't hold against Miami. Obviously, you couldn't hold against Detroit, but you still won that game. You got smoked by the Packers. Your star player seemed like he put a lot of the blame on you yesterday is I, I am curious now where people fall in terms of they're like, that's fine. Or if they're closer to you in terms of, hey, I look at the last several years and the sacks and the turnovers and think, oh, I'm not thrilled about this. I think the tough thing is, Corey, is when Mike McCarthy had a say in this, he hired one of the worst defensive coordinators in the NFL that's and Mike true. Nolan. I don't think Mike McCarthy honestly has any say. I, I won't say that. He will not have a strong opinion in the room that will be considered because he's on a one-year contract. So I think the next defensive coordinator will be more of a Stephen Jones hire. I don't know who that's going to be. I don't know if they're going to say, man, we don't want to lose Al Harris. We're just going to promote him to defensive coordinator to try to keep him here. Uh, I, I don't know who it'll be, but I don't think that but you I'm not excited logically, about Mike McCarthy making a decision. He might hire Jim Nolan back. I mean, Mike oh Nolan God. back. Because Dan Quinn might do the same thing for Harris. He might be like, oh, you can be my DC here. Right. Well, and uh, and Dirty, uh, you know, his defensive line coach that's just kind of followed him around everywhere as well. And, I mean, I don't know how realistic it is because, Mike, you'll point out very frequently, stars don't typically leave the football teams. Usually they sign they sign back with that contract with whoever. There's no such thing as free agency in the NFL. But Micah was like, I'm going wherever Dan Quinn goes. And like that's a like maybe some people would be happy if that happened. Uh maybe some people wouldn't. But that's there you are with with a, a coach that what we heard too was that he went across the hall and said and knocked on Mike McCarthy's door and said, Your offense is too easy to stop or too easy to 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 cover. We, you got to do something different. And he knows Dak. He knows he, he was watching Dak. And now you got to face him twice a year. He knows what your team is. So, Washington, something that we always felt was, haha, it's a joke over there, has a, has a legitimate coach that you have to compete and contend with. This is 
this is fascinating as we quickly pivot from, again, Sunday. I just want to make sure everybody knows. Sunday, we'll find out 2 o'clock for the FIFA broadcast about if the Metroplex is getting the World Cup final. If not, I believe very strongly they'll get one of the semifinals and then some other games. But Dan Quinn. Do you think Eric Bieniemy stays with Dan Quinn? I, I guess I don't. But I'm I'm also curious about is the window for that just over? Because like Bieniemy, in my estimation, specifically went to a team where he was like, "Oh, this head coach might be in trouble," and then that head head coach does in fact get fired. And we never heard his name. Yeah, and like. They lost their first choice. Ben Johnson was their guy, right? And that's an offensive hire. Yes. And then they were like, eh, I'm going to pass on this job. And then his name doesn't come up and they immediately pivot to Dan Quinn. I'm just curious about the window for him becoming a head coach or if that's just never going to be a thing that happens. Uh, well, I mean, if Jerry is truly going all in, Belichick's the next <laughs> defensive coordinator for the Cowboys, right? Hey, look, if he's willing to do that, in, in, in. For what it's worth, Kevin, over the last three years, let's just walk, rock with three years, because the, the COVID year was weird, all right? Numbers-wise, that team, Mike McCarthy walks in, is trying to figure everything out. Mike Nolan was here, as Mike pointed out just moments ago. Dan Quinn gets here points wise. You're ranked seventh, fifth, and fifth. You're top five uh, in points given up defense. And when it comes to turnovers, you were one of the top turnover teams every year while Dan Quinn was here. Now, and like when it comes to teams rank and takeaway giveaway ratio, one, two, and five in the last three years. Now, and that's with Trayvon Diggs out this year. So, and Deron Bland doing what he was doing. And the two years before, they were the first team since the 70s Steelers to repeat leading league in turnovers. Very impressive. And your pass rush was something that we hadn't seen. So, again, this is these are the, the things that you're like, you know what, that's not good enough. Get him out of here. You better find somebody that's damn fine. And you, what you're probably doing is finding somebody that got fired for some reason or got let go because their team didn't do well either. To your point, and I get Cowboy fans are, I'm not saying majority, but some of them are like, good riddance. You didn't help us win in the playoffs. Yeah. I don't know if you're going to find a better defensive coordinator than Dan Quinn. Yeah. I mean, you threw out some good names. I'm not saying Vrabel wouldn't be an awesome name. I, I think that Vrabel is probably going to wait one year. And see if he can become a head coach again and maybe not take a one-year defensive coordinator job. The other thing that's tough here, too, a little tough. If you're getting hired by Jerry and Steven, you're not connected at all to the success or failure of your head coach. But you're coming into a team that has a coach on a one-year yep. deal. Now, I assume this. If they make the playoffs, Mike McCarthy's getting an extension. Jerry's not going to fire a coach that makes the playoffs four years in a row, my opinion. I know that other people disagree, but he does not like making tough decisions when it comes to football. He likes making easy decisions. But if I'm a defensive coordinator, I'm a little bit worried or concerned going, how much do I want to hitch my my career off of a one-year coach right now? And that's where I would be curious where – I don't actually think you'll get, I see people saying Vrabel or Belichick. I'd be like, hey, great. If you worked out a deal where it was like, hey, if McCarthy fails, you're the next guy. I don't think that's likely. What if you hired Belichick? He becomes the head coach and you just demote McCarthy to offensive coordinator. <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't. I That does seem like something the Cowboys would do, honestly. You know what? I, really, the quick reaction from Twitter is Commanders fans are furious is they're like hold on we fired ron rivera to hire ron rivera or we hired ron <laughs> rivera to hire a bald ron rivera is what some people are saying yeah and so it seems as though that makes sense just the snap decision the snap discussion from commanders fans at least on twitter is they're not thrilled yeah it, it is i mean you you again the conversation of when hiring a head coach do you want defensive minded or do you want offensive minded head coach? Sure. And what's your quarterback's situation? Is your quarterback one of those quarterbacks that's been around for a while and he's really good, but you're just kind of lacking defense and you don't have to worry about the quarterback like a Tom Brady, Peyton Man, you didn't have to worry about that. Go hire a defensive coach because your quarterback is the system. And nowadays it's more the mindset of, Hey, if you're going to get a young quarterback, which, which, hey, that's probably what they're going to do. I don't know that they're sticking with Sam Howell. 
Now, they might be sitting there saying, hey, we need to go ahead and use some draft picks here to make sure we get one of the top quarterbacks. Then don't you want that quarterback to be with a, an offensive coordinator consistently for the time that he's there? So hire an offensive-minded quarter uh, coach for your young quarterback. But they don't have that there. So I'm, I'm very interested. Dan Quinn wants to be, uh, I mean... It's going to be a tougher year for the Cowboys because of where they finished this year. That's going to be their schedule is going to look tougher, right? And, yeah. And defensive coordinators only last so long before people start picking up on the trends that they have with their personnel. And quite honestly, the Cowboys didn't give him the personnel that he needed to succeed late in the season. Should he have stood up and said, I need real linebackers instead of these safeties? Or should he have just said, hey, I can handle it like this. I'm out of here anyway. Uh, that's where we were this year. The one thing I don't want to see is because I've seen multiple texts. There's like, good riddance, Dan Quinn was garbage, he was trash. That, that's just factually inaccurate. If If your point is, the last month and a half, I think he's been really disappointing. I think most of us can agree with that all day. But for the majority, like I remember this time last year when we found out Dan Quinn was coming back, people were stoked. For the most part, he's been very good here. Yeah, people to wanted to replace the head coach with him, and then they're like, nah, he's not good enough. I think you have to remember this. The Cowboys suck at safety for a decade, at least, yes. if not longer. And he's like, all right, I get there's no budget for safety here, right? I'm talking to Will McClay and Steven Jones, and they tell Dan Quinn, we don't spend money on safeties. We, we don't do it, and we never will. And we're trying not to spend money on linebackers for the most part. Sometimes special situations will do it, but we don't spend money on safeties. We don't spend money on linebackers. You got to figure this out, and we don't care at all about one technique defensive tackles. And he's like, all right. Let me look around and let me see what I can do with kind of very little money and to make this thing work. I'm going to patch this together because you're telling me you spend money on quarterback, wide receiver, offensive line, sometimes running back, defensive ends for sure on that side, and cornerbacks. Like your money is defensive ends and cornerbacks, and then you don't really spend much money anywhere else on defense, correct? And Dan Quinn's like, yep, that's what I'm hearing. So he figured out a way how to make people work for limited budget in his scheme. So whoever the defensive coordinator is, just know that Stephen Jones puts together a salary cap that says safeties are stupid, linebackers are pretty stupid, defensive tackles, one technique, are really dumb, and I made a major mistake actually drafting one in the first round who really caused me to go, what the hell was I doing? I will never one technique it again. Up at the top. So the defensive coordinator coming in has a really tough job because the salary cap guy says a lot of positions on defense are stupid and we don't spend money there. Yeah, that really stinks uh, because last year at draft time, Kevin, we had a couple of offensive linemen that we would have loved to have had yep. at instead of Mozzie. And Mike McCarthy um, seeds the pick to the we need to add to the defensive side of the ball. And this guy, they had a vision for, you know, they have a vision for Mozzie and what he can grow into and all that. And you could have had a better, maybe a better guard uh, on your offensive line in the future of your offensive line. Maybe Tyler Smith could slide out in your tack. So this whole thing, this is, I mean, it's a cycle. It happens to every team. This isn't, this isn't new to the Cowboys, but this is where you're having a vision for what your team can be in the future. And you draft for somebody that's here and then he's gone the next year. And and that's that's frustrating because like, Mozzie might not even turn out, but you got that guy instead of an Osiris Torrance or something. Yeah, like I that. think that's your last couple name. picks are also your Dan Quinn's picks. He had a vision for Overshone. Unfortunately, he got hurt. The new defensive coordinator might not have a vision for him. Yeah, he might be like, "That's not the type of linebacker I like." And so now you drafted a dude in the third round that's your defensive coordinator. I'm just I'm throwing out an example of yes. sometimes like it's not my guy. I didn't draft him. I'm drafting a dude in the second or third round to take his spot because this is the type of linebacker I like. So that also plays in if you're bringing in a guy that's not a Dallas Cowboy guy, uh, Ron Rivera or somebody like that, he might have a totally different vision for what that position's supposed to look like, and you don't have the finances to help that guy out, so he might have to deal with guys that he doesn't even like. And this is probably completely unfair, just one season removed from the draft, but it does kind of feel like most of our hopes and dreams for this draft being awesome are based on somebody that's injured. Mm -hmm. you know? We already know this draft's not going to be awesome. We're just hoping that it becomes passing, right? Yes. And the other thing, and I have seen some people push back, and I, I appreciate 
I appreciate that. Talking about Dan Quinn is he took over just the most god awful, terrible defense. Yes. He take over a me mediocre defense and be like, that can make these guys good. He took over the worst defense and made it yeah. the strength of the team for I was, a while. I was wrong. I was like, Kevin, can you please shut your mouth? This is one of the worst defenses in the NFL. They're not gonna, even going to be average. And they got Micah Parsons, and they were above average. Because I can yes. remember going, you're insane if you think that almost the same talent with one first-round draft pick is going to actually go from one of the worst defenses in the NFL to average. It ain't going to happen. And he got it above average. And so, I don't know. You're taking over an above-average defense with flaws, with weaknesses, but an above-average defense. Can the new defensive coordinator keep it above average? Uh, that's going to be a lot to ask because Dan Quinn took over one of the worst defenses in the NFL and immediately turned it into above average. Yeah, and then the other thing too, like for what it's worth, the players played for him. They loved him. I mean, you, a lot of those players loved that defensive coordinator. And Mike, you're talking about maybe the head coach doesn't get along with whoever this next guy is. Maybe the players are like, who the crap is this? Again, they could hire from within. They could right. just say, Al Harris, Joe Witt Jr., you're the guy. You just step right in and Part everything's... of the Witt family with the Bobbies, right? What's that? Part of the Bobby Witt The Bobby family? Witt, yeah. Bobby Witt, Bobby Witt Jr., Joe Witt. That's exactly how it goes. So <laughs> Because it's a junior. Uh -huh, sure. Yeah, exactly. So, But the, like that's maybe that's the, the way it goes. And he knows the way Dan Quinn did things. And he does them just a little bit differently, but keeps a lot of things the same. If you go, it all it does kind of depend too, because Dan Quinn's approach was we are a four three defense, but our base is a three four defense. And you're like, what the hell does that mean? And he's like, well, we play more of this than we do of that. And then this, this year they were playing more dime than anything else. He tried to be flexible with the personnel that he had. He worked really well with Will McClay. They worked really hard together to try to get the best uh, the best talent on the field. And that was those were things that I thought were quality. It's and so now it's just. I'm not freaking out about it. It's just now you have a lot more, a, a bunch of new questions that have to be answered. And there's no guarantee that the continuity with the defense is going to stay the same, nor that it would have in year you know, four with Dan Quinn either. I agree. I agree. What a fascinating turn of events, especially since. Man, he was fun to listen to, though, man. He was blasting. He here. was. And I keep thinking about this from yesterday. And I know we haven't played the audio because, you know, other things happen. This morning, but Micah Parsons talking yesterday, I guess, about, hey, I, I play where I'm schemed to play. And then the social media blowing up about what a crap scheme it was and everything like that. And then the person who would draw that up the next morning out the door. See you later. I, those things might actually not be connected whatsoever, but maybe they got wind that it's looking like Quinn is going to go to Washington. So feel free to launch away. I I have no freaking I do. I do wonder with the the all in approach if Jerry did like he had he had have had this in mind. Look, Dan's out there interviewing for jobs. We it had happen. We had an open conversation about it. You know, I'm I'm pretty sure that Dan Quinn was very honest with him about the approach that he was taking. Look, if this happens, then I'm going to go for it. Uh, so like, I don't think that it was anything they hadn't thought about. I guess my and they're like today they're probably sitting there going, oh yeah, let's just go ahead and start our plan that we had already kind of enacted. This isn't a surprise to us.